How are we going everybody? Now the other day I showed you my garden soil, how bad it was and I added some compost and bark and things like that to get some aeration. We've also been talking about potty mix and the, the benefits, the pros and cons about potty mix when you buy a bag, storing it in the sun or keeping it for too long, uh, the bad pathogens that can actually develop in it. So I thought let's take it one step further and I'm going to make a blend now mixing a, a few different mediums so you can make your own potty mix. Now this product's been around for a long time. I haven't I've used it many times in the past. I haven't been of recently because I've been doing large scale gardening. But my family's been also asking me, and it's been in the back of my mind, to start growing some microgreens. Now, for those who know about microgreens, it's basically your vegetables grown to a certain size and harvested before they get any bigger. And at that size, where they are, like four to six weeks of age, they, that's when they've got the most amount of nutrients inside those phytonutrients, whatever you call those vitamins and minerals that you can get out of them. So for your health benefits, so if you're into you know, eating healthy and growing vegetables, even try growing a range of vegetables that are really small. They call them microgreens, like your wheats, um, your broccolis, your cauliflowers, even your lettuce. And today I'm gonna to be sowing lettuce. We're gonna grow them to a certain size and we're gonna harvest them later on. Now. Growing those, the biggest problem you may have or you find in the past, or even now that is, is growing them in soil. So because they're so small, you've got to take them out and try and rinse them because you want to eat the roots and all. You can eat the entire plant rather than just cutting it to the ground. Now to harvest it from soil, it becomes a bit messy because you get the particles of soil stuck to it and all things like that, um, and potty mix. So there's another way you can do it, and it's been used a lot by a lot of commercial growers for indoor plants. But you find your Phalaenopsis orchids are grown in this, and a, and a whole array of indoor uh, devil's ivy, uh, the uh, Swiss cheddar cheese plant, um, the monsteria, the dwarf, the dwarf one. They grow them in these little, uh, well, this medium here. Now, this is called cocoa pith uh, block, cocoa peat, you could say, I suppose, but it's not even a peat. It's um, the actual coconut husk. It's a byproduct from the coconut um, fruit itself. It's a sustainable product. It's not a new product um, uh, that's harvested or farmed from the ground and that's causing any you know, adverse reactions to the environmental world. This is a byproduct from the coconuts um, and it's been broken down. It's been milled down to a, a smaller size uh, and then compressed into these blocks. Now this is a brick. This brick here will swell out to about nine litres, which is about average, on average, half a bag of potty mix. So all in this little brick here. So it's about a 650 grams. All you need to do is add five, five litres or so of water to this and watch it swell out. But I'm not going to do this one. I've actually taken it out of the packet, but I should have taken this one out. I'm going to do this big monster here, the gorilla. This thing here weighs five kilos and you'll get about 70, 80 litres of potty mix or growing medium. Let's call it growing medium, um, call it potty mix if you like. Um, and that is equivalent to two bags, if not three bags of potty mix. Um, and you can blend it, so it doesn't have to be straight in this. I'm going to do a couple of things. First, we're going to swell it out, show you how it swells out. If I can get this open. All right. So it takes a few minutes to, to soften up and, let the, and the, for the water to absorb into it. And this will take approximately 30 litres of water to get it to its full swelled out and you know usable state so a nice wheelbarrow if you have and then simply just pour water over it you can see the steam coming out of it no folks that's not a reaction by just adding cold water to it i actually added hot water too so i could speed up the process so i can absorb it now this will absorb up to 10 times its weight in moisture so you know if it's one gram it'll turn to 10 grams it has the ability to retain moisture for you in a pot environment like a growing medium it also helps to keep your soil aerated so if you've got a heavy clay soil if you're going to use it in the garden because you can use it in the garden as well i might actually do some of this later on in our veggie garden and mix it through some of the soil that we have. So the, the hydrophobic soil that I have, this will create moisture, it will retain the moisture for you. Now, when you add water, this swells out and becomes this beautiful medium. It's this friable, loose medium. Now, there's a, it's almost pH neutral. There's a little bit of potash element in it. Um, I'm going to add some charcoal into it, some black grit into it, and a little bit of compost just to give it a bit of body. You can also add uh, perlite if you like, but that's not something that's commonly used unless you're a serious gardener. And uh, vermiculite, that's the other one. Now, there, there are a couple of items or mediums that I'm going to look forward to see if I can get the online team to get them on for people to try out because they're great to mix into your, 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 your peat block if you like. 
your cocoa pith. Now this is also very similar to those little buttons that we have online, the, the Jiffy Pods and the Peat Pots. But the difference is from the Jiffy Pods, they have a little mesh around them, little nets around them to keep them contained so when they swell out they don't fall apart like this. So you can plant your little seeds, single tomato seeds in them. Whereas in this one here, well you can create a potting mix medium, a potting medium that is, or a seeding bed so you can grow some seeds. Let's turn this over, see what's going on under here. Have a look at that. Yep. So it takes up to 20-30 minutes. Oop, there we are. It's coming apart. You can speed it up obviously by breaking it up yourself because at the end of the day it's all going to absorb the moisture up so this slurry that you see here eventually will evenly disperse itself and get absorbed through the medium. Might have to actually add some more water now. Have a look at this. Spent a bit of time just breaking it down folks, so I thought we'd just fast track it. But this is what you get out of that one big block, the five kilo block. All this, this is pretty much about 70 litres. Now for your typical seeds or your microgreens, you don't have to use perlite and things like that. You can just use this straight. This is a typical seeding tray, right? It's, like I said, it's got a neutral uh, pH on it. Well, about six, let's say. It sits around there, maybe slightly acidic. You don't have to add anything to this for your microgreens. You can grow it straight into a, a mix like that. So in a little seeding tray, this is what you get your local garden centers. Ask them for them. They normally give them away. They might sell them to you. And all you need now is just to sow your seeds in. I'm going to put some lettuce seeds. I'm using my seed sower, a little hand sower. I think I've got about a thousand seeds in here. Sounds like a lot, but it's not when you're harvesting them as a microgreen. And if you haven't seen one of these before, they've got little opening, regulated opening, so the different size depending on the size of the seed you're going to sow. And this being the lettuce seed, it's going to be either the number one or number two opening. I'll stick with the number two because I don't mind it falling quite freely because we're just going to harvest. We're not going to be separating this later on. Just evenly spread it. See how it's just spreading it beautifully evenly everywhere? How cool is that, huh? And you can go over it a second time if you've got little gaps. Now with this stuff here, you don't really need to press it down. I mean the seed that is. So when I water it, it should actually flatten itself on its own. But if it doesn't, you can sprinkle a little bit more over the top just to cover the seed. And remember, the seed's so small it doesn't need to be deep at all. Just a dribble of each in a little bottle. So we've got the EK Butch and the liquid gold. That's how little you need to put it, it's only a litre. And the bottle top sprinkler, folks. Give it a shake. And spray it on. See how it's pushing it into the cocoa pith? It's flattening it out. And if you've got any seeds sitting above at the end after you finish hydrating it, just go around and push them, push them down like that. It's really soft and it's spongy. It's beautiful. Keep this in a nice warm spot, not too hot. Being lettuce and all things like that, it doesn't really need a lot of heat. But if you really want to speed up the process, obviously a little mini hothouse if you have, or windowsill, garage window, or facing north against the wall. That's all you need to do with that. So that's how you can sow your little microgreens and harvest cleanly because there's no soil, there's no pathogens. No pathogens or, you know, bacteria or anything will grow in this stuff unless you start blending in your manures and things like that which is what we're going to do next to create our little potty mix. Now I'm not going to do all this because there's a lot there so I'm only going to show you an equal amount of uh, the cocoa pith with the pure charcoal that we have here. It's a good amount there. I know it seems like a lot but that's what we use. A small handful of black grit small handful of worm castings, maybe two. I love this stuff. And you can use compost if you make your own compost or animal manure. Make sure it's aged. You know that I've got my chickens and the pine shavings, so I'm going to put a couple of handfuls of this stuff in there too, like that there. Now again, once you start mixing it, if you find it's still too coarse or not enough, add whatever more of what you need to give it a good balance. It's looking really good folks. Now this is the alternative to buying potty mix if you know what I'm talking about. 
you can make your own like this straight in the pot transplant your seedlings and in actual fact that's what I'm going to do with some of my seedlings I'm going to try it out see how good my little mixer is there's so many different recipes I'd love you to show me yours if you're already doing this I'd love to know what you're putting in your potty mix and how su successful you are as well because it's all about sharing and sharing is caring folks and this is my little blend there have a look at that how cool is that it's, it'll hold together, but as a potty mix, you need it to drain freely. That's what you need. Now that there would be ready for some seedlings, some tomato seedlings, eh? In a grow bag or a grow pot. Put some of that stuff in there. Check it out on our website, folks. We've got the uh, cocoa pith bricks and blocks, the small ones and the large ones. This is what it starts like, and this is what it ends up like at the end once you hydrate it. Now you can do all sorts of things with it. Pot up your indoor plants so you've got no soil running through the base of the pots, so you're not doing it inside. Or do your seedlings, or even your little microgreens. And at the end of the day, you can dig it into your garden. It's all available at VasiliesGarden.com. From me, Vasili, Maresi.